rheumatoid arthritis RA update. Here we go. <laughs> hey there guys. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're brand new here, hi, my name's Courtney and I need to come up with a new intro because even I'm getting bored of hearing myself say that. Thank you for being tolerant and not clicking out of the video just yet. Today we will be giving, or I will be giving you guys a rheumatoid arthritis update. Y'all are the sweetest people on the internet. Thank you for caring. Thank you for asking. Back in May of 2018, I was diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis and I have shared some of my story with you guys. And a lot of y'all are asking how I'm doing and are interested in an update. So here we are in, what is it? It's, is it May? It's May, 2022. I don't know if that's mom brain or RA brain or what have you, but anyway, if I've made you giggle at all up until this point, please give this video a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. Let's get right into the video. So if you clicked on this video and have no idea what rheumatoid arthritis is, it is an autoimmune condition wherein your immune system gets very confused. And instead of doing its normal job of keeping you alive, it starts attacking your joints. Rheumatoid arthritis is very different than osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is like arthritis from wear and tear. So repetitive movements, you get arthritis in your hands and knees and things. You can get arthritis in any joint, but rheumatoid arthritis is a result of your immune system chewing, gnawing on your joints. It's great. I was having a myriad of really strange symptoms and after becoming a human pincushion and having every blood test under the sun run on me, I came back positive for rheumatoid arthritis markers and got to go see a rheumatologist. The reason I'm making today's video is that when you are someone who has an invisible disease, an autoimmune condition, you look fine from the outside, just looking at you, you look healthy, is that you can feel either lazy or crazy or a little bit of both. You feel very alone. And something that has been really comforting and helpful to me is hearing other people's experience. So that's why I'm here. I'm sharing my experience in order to help someone out there if you are going through the same thing. Okay, I didn't necessarily go into full detail about what I'm about to talk about in my first video. I may have mentioned it on this channel before, but my brain has been failing me lately. So I'm going to go ahead and say it here again, just in case. When I first got my diagnosis, I immediately started doing all the research and stuff and things and ask my rheumatologist, what do you think about these diets that claim to have significant benefits for people with autoimmune conditions, specifically rheumatoid arthritis? As it's an inflammatory condition, aren't these really restrictive anti-inflammatory diets the way to go? Like, won't this fix it? And he cautioned me, girl, don't do it. Dial back, don't go crazy. I ignored him. <laughs> I decided I was going to heal myself. I believed everyone on the internet that said that they had had an autoimmune condition, an inflammatory condition, rheumatoid arthritis, and they had used their diet to cure themselves. And now they were a magical unicorn with zero symptoms and able to frolic through this life happy as a lark. I thought for sure that that would be me. I went full Courtney researching diets and really getting into the nitty gritty of nutrition to heal myself. If it's out there on the internet, I have heard it. For eight months, I was so diligent in my diet. And when I first started eating very well, I started to feel better and was really encouraged. But here's the thing about autoimmune conditions. 
you have good seasons and you have bad seasons and you have a good season and you have a bad season or at least this has been my experience thus far in the two years since getting my diagnosis it is possible that when i cleaned up my diet i was just coming into a good season why do i say this well at first it seemed like the diet was helping then i crashed so hard and then i got better and then i crashed again and then i got better and then i crashed again all while being so careful with my diet and this was wildly frustrating and aggravating to me because i was working so hard eating a very specific diet and i wasn't necessarily getting or feeling the results that i hoped for i also mildly developed an unhealthy relationship with food through this which is ironic because i was eating so healthy but i definitely lost a bunch of weight and became obsessed with food every waking moment i was thinking about the next thing i was going to eat would it hurt me would it help me and just food in general because i was not eating enough after eight months i threw in the towel and said forget this i'm starving i'm scared of food this is ridiculous i'm just gonna start eating now and see what happens and guess what i didn't die my symptoms did not get worse or better with my diet zero effect for me if you have had success changing your diet and alleviating your symptoms i am so happy for you and that worked sadly that was not my story so that is why i'm sharing this experience i thought for sure after reading everyone's testimonials that food would cure me like if i just ate perfect enough then i wouldn't have this autoimmune condition anymore and that was not the case for me what i have discovered however is that eating adequate protein for me and my body actually does make a big difference turns out that the more protein i eat the less muscle soreness i have the less joint soreness i have and making sure that i am eating an adequate number of grams of protein per day alleviates a lot of that for me as for my symptoms now after two years i'm getting better at discerning what is tied to my rheumatoid arthritis and what is normal human symptoms of living life normal humans whack themselves and they hurt and then they have to heal you can sprain your wrist and it take time to heal humans with rheumatoid arthritis it's different they won't do anything to the joint it will just all of a sudden get incredibly painful for a while and then magically get better very quickly it's weird i have always lived with joint pain of some sort my entire life this begs the question have i had rheumatoid arthritis my entire life and just got diagnosed in 2020 or did it get worse does it flare does it get better you know honestly i'm not sure who knows i have had this joint pain on and off for forever it's possible that i have a fairly high pain tolerance when it comes to joint pain other kinds of pain i'm a big wussy but that's not the worst part about having rheumatoid arthritis for me i it's not the most annoying or inconvenient the most frustrating symptom of rheumatoid arthritis for me is the fatigue this i know i've talked about before on my channel but it's like i hit a wall i will be trucking along in my day doing great then all of a sudden whoa i am not doing okay at all what just happened to me who dropped this pile of bricks on my head i am getting better at gauging what kind of day it's going to be whether that's going to be a good day where i have a full head of steam all the way until 9 p.m at night and i'm still going strong feeling good 
or is it going to be a bad day where I hit a wall at 9.30 in the morning and then I'm white knuckling it through the rest of the day just trying to survive? I am getting better at being able to tell what kind of day it's gonna be, how, if I should rest, if I should pull back, if I should go slower, which drives me crazy, by the way. <laughs> I am a person who likes to get stuff done. I am getting better at gauging what kind of day it's gonna be, but I do still find myself getting so surprised that I feel so bad. And then I'll get surprised when I start to feel really good and realize that I am just coming out of a bad slump. It's interesting, you get accustomed to feeling like you're always going to live in a slump where you're constantly fatigued and you feel like you're moving through molasses because everything is hard. And then you come out of that and you feel like, oh, I can breathe again. Oh yeah, this is what it feels like to be normal. I find myself being so grateful now for those days. It's a wonderful breath of fresh air when I feel great. While also reminding me to give myself grace during the seasons where I don't feel my best, when I don't have as much energy. I am having to learn over and over and over again not to rely on my own strength. My strength doesn't come from me. It comes from my Heavenly Father. If you wanna hear more about my testimony and stuff like that, feel free to watch that video. I won't lean in too much into that in this video, but just know that having an autoimmune condition has actually strengthened my faith rather than weakening it and how I deal with living with this condition the only way I'm able to deal with it, guys, is that God is my strength. Because if I had to rely on my own strength, I'd be curled up in a corner weeping. <laughs> I could not handle this. But God is good, and His goodness is not contingent on my circumstances. So there's that. I do want to talk about my most recent episode that really caught me off guard. So for those of you who don't know, I had our baby girl about three months ago. It was wonderful. She's amazing. We have an older kiddo as well who is five years old, and I absolutely adore getting to be their mother. And I work two jobs from home while having two kiddos. So there you go. There's the backstory on that. One day I had picked up our kiddo from school, had baby girl with me in the car and was driving home. And I had been feeling just like slightly off that day, but nothing terrible. I thought I could push through. That's the sneaky thing about these autoimmune conditions. You think you can push through. You're like, ah, just try a little bit harder and you can get through this. Just don't be lazy. I'm driving home and I start to feel incredibly tired and dizzy and my skin started to hurt and ache and like just the lightest touch was painful and it felt like the flu felt like i had been whacked by the sickness stick i thought i was coming down with something i was able to get home safely get the kids all taken care of, everyone was safe, got baby girl put down for a nap. Five-year-old kiddo was thoroughly entertained and safe, and I crashed, like intensely crashed. I tend to be a fairly tough, gritty sort of person, and there was no being tough in this moment. There was no being gritty through this moment. I crawled in bed in the middle of the afternoon and didn't come out again. I couldn't lift up my head. I couldn't even open my eyes. I hurt so bad all over and it wasn't just my joints. It was, like I said, my skin, like the flu. I thought for sure I was running, you know, a thousand degree fever. I was not running a high fever. It was low grade at best and just was so tired I couldn't I didn't even want to listen to an audiobook I just wanted I couldn't even turn off the lights I was so tired I didn't have the energy to do that I just 
crawled in bed and laid down. Thank goodness for modern technology because I was able to call my husband via Siri and ask him to please come rescue me because I needed some help. I hate having to ask for help. I hate it. But thankfully, he is the sweetest human on the planet, came home, took care of the kiddos, took care of me. What was so scary about that episode is that it was so out of my control. I did not have any control over being able to take care of my children. You know what? I guess I did. I was able to get them safe and then crash. So I, I do need to be grateful for that, but it did feel very out of control to have such a bad episode sneak up on me and grab me by the ankles and drag me down. I thought for sure I had come down with something serious, but after resting and not getting out of bed from mid afternoon till the next morning, I got up the next morning and felt completely normal, which led me to our good old friend, the internet. And I just kind of started lightly doing some research into some of my favorite RA forums. There are some really nice Facebook groups for people with rheumatoid arthritis, and I find comfort in hearing other people's stories, which is why I'm sharing these stories with you. Apparently an episode like this can be tied to rheumatoid arthritis and your autoimmune condition. This type of fatigue, this utter wipeout, having your legs knocked out from under you does happen sometimes with people with an autoimmune condition. Partly it was comforting to know what had happened, the reason I had been knocked flat. The other part of me is not comforted at all because I don't have control over this autoimmune condition and it theoretically is incurable and I'm stuck with it for the rest of my life, which I'm okay with and not okay with all at the same time. The last thing I wanna talk about that I actually find helpful is how I kind of put together my day. I find that living with rheumatoid arthritis is like this. You have your fuel tank. You do everything in your power to make sure you start the next day with a full tank of gas. And your gas meter's broken. You have no clue how much gas is in there, but you fill it. You fill it up as best you can the night before. And little magic fairies siphon out an unknown amount of gas and you get to start your day with an unknown amount of gas in your tank. And you just start driving and you drive until you're out of fuel. This has been very consistent for me over the past two years. Usually I'm able to wake up in the morning and after I have worked out the soreness and had my couple cups of coffee, I can get rolling. How far I'm able to get through the day depends on what kind of RA day it's gonna be. Some days I make it till 9.30 in the morning and then I'm done skis. <laughs> and some days I make it all the way till 9.30 at night and I'm still going strong. I have no clue how much fuel is in that tank when I wake up in the morning. What I can do is I can wake up and first thing in the morning get my exercise in while I'm feeling good, making sure that I am consistently moving my body when I have that energy. Sometimes, sometimes, not all the time, but as a general rule, will give me more fuel for the rest of the day. Also, moving your body and being healthy is good for you. I find that even in my worst RA seasons, when I am really struggling, getting up and going for a walk, just a walk in the early morning gloriousness that is the dawn helps, helps so much. Moving my body just a little bit helps. So that is something that is incredibly helpful. Also, in the good hour windows, I make sure to bulk prepare food making sure that there is food made because once I have crashed, 
The last thing I want to do is prepare food. So having some things made and put away in my fridge that I can just pull out and nuke for the kiddos is so helpful. And after I have crashed, that is usually when I sit and do my computer work. I save that for when I am tired. And I try not to push myself so hard that I smack the wall and have to crawl in bed. And I, I so rarely have to crawl in bed to rest, but that did happen that one day. Most days when I crash and hit the wall, I can sit upright and, you know, use my hands and my eyeballs to work on the computer. So overall, that is how it's going right now with my rheumatoid arthritis. <laughs> I haven't found the magic cure, guys. Diet didn't work, exercise didn't cure it, but eating well and moving my body does seem to help. Sleeping adequately is also helpful and just accepting that my worth is not in my accomplishments, but that my worth comes from my heavenly father and being reminded of that over and over and over again every time I run up against the RA wall it's humbling and it's good for me it's good for prideful Courtney to constantly be reminded of where my strength comes from all right guys I hope this video was helpful I hope it was comforting to you if you are in the same boat that I'm in I hope you all are having an absolutely fantastic day thank you for watching talk to y'all later bye